Nigma. Uh, that also means that now it is the time I decide I go ahead and review the game. Oh shoot, it is kind of late. But at least I can do so. I think it's too late for an Exilia 2 stream today. I don't think... I don't think we should. <laughs> it's really late. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, anyway, so... Let me lower the volume really quick. Yeah, I'm going to lower it to about this much. And so, normally... So normally at this time that means like we... Because we've completed the playthrough, this is probably... The time I use to... It's not even early anymore here. <laughs> oh yeah, no, right? So it is now the time to review the game. So normally at, when I do a playthrough... Oh, 7 p.m. Oh, don't don't ask. It's, it is going, getting close to... It is pretty much the morning now. So... I'll go... I usually go ahead and do a review of the game. And I go through... I cover it on the story side. The gameplay side. The controls... Well, gameplay is kind of end controls are kind of con their graphics and sound, as well as yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Those are like the four base. I feel like those are the four basic components of most of these of RPGs in general. All right, so let me go ahead and start. So this is Terra I, I do recognize it is a Super Nintendo game, so I will be grading it more on its like um. On against its peers and like the games that were out at the time so with this game let's first go ahead and go with the story so I wonder how I feel it is really like I don't know do I like it more than illusion of Gaia I feel at first for me personally I was like early on I was like oh I don't know if this is as as um exciting as Illusion of Gaia. There's a lot of like, oh well... I mean, you're kind of... Because in Illusion of Gaia, the difference between... I'm gonna cover cover this, but like... The difference between Illusion of Gaia, whereas Illusion of Gaia, you had a lot of characters that accompanied you for long periods of time, or like that you ran into frequently. This game, like, at first you kind of were on your own, and you were like talk, Like, you were helping the animals and the plants, and it's not till... I think it... You don't really get to meet like recurring characters until like way later later in the game when after you've unlocked the humans so i think it's actually at first i was kind of like well i'm kind of like okay we're just saving another world i don't know what we're doing we're just doing <coughs> i'm not sure what we're accomplishing we're resurrecting world and clearly <coughs> that must be a good thing right but i do like the twist that like after once the start blurry actually gets going and you start meeting more and more of the character like more of the recurring characters, you see how <laughs> you see how the um, how like this is not like the other two games. You're not simply just resurrecting the world and then like uh, stopping evil. This is more of a you're actually you're <coughs> you're actually nothing is actually exactly as it seems. And it's very interesting that you are not, unlike the previous two games, you don't talk to, like, in Soul Blazer, you're directly, con you're a direct servant of, um, Light Gaia, as they call him in this game. And you fight against Death Toll, Dark Gaia. In Illusion of Gaia itself, you are also still a servant of the Master, who is, um, who is also Light Gaia. Another, that's just another alias. But this one, you're actually a, a servant of Dark Guy. That's actually a really unusual. And at first, you're just there to... The twist is that you were just a pawn. And I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Where it's a kind of a good contrast. And honestly, this game is... I do think, like, okay, like... There are some messed up things that happen in the Illusion of Gaia. But this game is like, oh, shoot. Unlike all Gaia games, this game is not afraid of, of like showing death and showing like something, a bit of tragedy. Especially like I, it's just sad that your even like the people who helped you, like they kind of go down with the ship, and you never see them again. So, I mean, unfortunately, I the only conclusion I can have is that they are gone. All your, like the people that helped you. And it's sort of, it's really sad, and it's all for the sake of, 
Quintet RIP, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, if they had... So, I like the fact that this game is certainly like... There's a lot of uh, also things about like reincarnation and... And just like the nature of like how to take care of the world and like... Also kind of a reflect, a little bit of a reflection of like how... I like that part of it, I was like, you could see like how human society like has changed. Even like you see like, it's a really really sh abridged version of like a bit of human history where things, technology just goes crazy, like progresses like crazy and it's, it's really nuts. And you see it in the game and you see it like reflecting the attitudes of people too. And it's actually, it's kind of cool. And it just makes you like appreciate the game more that they're trying to bring in this like a bigger uh, kind of like a poke at like how people are <laughs> and like what how things changed <laughs> over history so i i think i like the story a lot more now <laughs> than i than i was initially feeling when i first started at first like i was kind of feeling oh this isn't like illusion guy i'm not feeling the feels but here is this like oh there's a lot of things that happen. I'm just like, like L dies on the underworld. L L dies. You're just like, really? Is this how we're gonna do this? And like, there's a lot of tragedy. So, I guess like, for such a short game, like they they managed to cram in quite a, quite a bit, and like there's a lot of dealing with loss as well. And like I was talking about like with Mei Ling, like early like that dealing with loss of her parents and. Like just denial and and yeah, there were some. It's some pretty hard topics. So <laughs> I'm actually really glad that even in spite of showing all that, there's still like there's hope and like even the game is like you know like okay, no matter what, even wherever there's living things, there's always gonna be bad things that happen. But that also means like there's good things as well. And I think that's like really about like that's really a good takeaway if you were play this game. It's just like. Even though like all these bad things happen, like Ark, like someone, there's still hope. Ark was everyone's hope to stand against Dark Gaia and stop the world from being destroyed. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about about the story. So it's not too long, so there's not so many plot points, but there's definitely like there's definitely quite a few, especially getting near to the end there. Alright, so I'll go through it with graphics. So this game is definitely a step up above Illusion of Gaia for sure and well, definitely Soul Blazer, but that doesn't that's not even a fair comparison Soul Blazer was made around the beginning of the Super Nintendo's life. So it's certainly really really rough Illusion of Gaia was Okay, the um, the NPC the will looked great and then the NPCs kind of looked like eh like it was like the, the sprites weren't nearly as detailed then this game happened and the sprites in this game are certainly a lot better like of course there's a lot of repeated like npcs and there's i mean that's kind of par for the course even for other like the bigger budget rpgs like final fantasy 6 and 5 there's a lot of repeated npcs but like the main like the main like the main story <laughs> the NPCs in the main story were definitely like done much better <laughs> than in Illusion of Gaia like the game just looks so so much better so it's a huge improvement over Illusion of Gaia and the mode 7 is trippy but I I kind of like how it's used in this game it's big especially in the underworld you see that little wrapping of like blue I'm just like whoa this is so trippy and like I really like enjoyed the like little the effects to make like every like there's a lot of detail even in like in the backgrounds and like the some of the dungeons you're like oh wow they actually did they went they did a lot of work and like it looks really nice and it, you can definitely tell that this is from like they had built their experience with the Super Nintendo engine at that by that point and that's why it looks pretty good so 1996 is like a little before i think it was a little before the Nintendo 64 came out so <laughs> So I definitely think it looks good. And one nice thing, because this game's in 2D, you generally, like, the graphics don't get in the way of, like, I can't tell where I'm going or, like, I can't tell I'm blocked anywhere. There's only, like, maybe one or two places where, okay, some of the forests were, like, oh, 
okay, well, we have a... Oh, well, this tree is kind of blocking the way, and I can't see what I'm doing. So that's only... Like, there's just minor stuff that's like, okay, well, some parts of the dungeon are covered, or I can't... It looks like you should be able to cross it, but you can't. Generally, like, it, that didn't happen too much, so I'm, I'm actually okay with that. I think it's good. I think, like, I really like the... Especially, like, that final boss when you're walking into the Gaia Stone. It's just like, whoa, that's so trippy. So, yeah, they knew what they were... Like, there's so many effects. Even the cutscenes, and, like, there's so much, like... There's a lot of love put into trying to make the story, like, very, like... Very, like, abstract and, like, all, like, the visual... The imagery being abstract and, like, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah, I actually really like how this game looks a lot. And I think it really does, helps to push not just the story but the gameplay forward. And it's really cool. Like, I'm even remembering, like, the Animal and Bird Kingdoms. They look really nice. Uh, let's see. So, with that, I think... That's all I can say for for graphics. For sound, I think that huh, we're listening to a awesome music right now. The soundtrack is certainly an improvement. Up, as uh, in, in my opinion, it's better than Illusion of Gaia. Nothing like nothing against like that game. I think like I prefer this this soundtrack over that because there's a lot of good tracks here. Well, not that Illusion... Illusion of Guy had some really good ones too, so I guess that's not fair. I guess they're both good. I think this one's just a bit better. But, like, I definitely think this is among the better. It's better, it's better as a whole, for sure. And that's really awesome. The sounds are really cool. There is, um... I don't remember there being... I have, Me having any problems with any of the sound. I'm trying to remember... I don't think so. I think like, yeah, I'm just thinking like, did I have, there were any sound effects that were really annoying? I mean, not really. <laughs> Maybe well, okay, there was the baby, but that was like one time, so that doesn't really count. But yeah, a lot of the, but I think the music is really good, and like the sound effects sound really nice when you destroy things. A lot of it, some of it's reused from previous games like Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia, so I guess it's fine. But I don't, like, generally, like, yeah, the music is really nice, and, like, they always add a nice feel of atmosphere, especially, like, you go to the graves, you're just like, ooh. And then, like, you go to a haunted area, and then you hear that, like, eerie sound. I'm just like, oh, that's perfect. Who invoke that feel. And so. Yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about the sound. Alright, so that oh, means like we go to the final thing, which is gameplay and controls. So, first off, I think the controls are pretty good. I mean, there's only one... Some of the stuff is a little tricky to do, but like, it's nothing like too involving. And we're like, oh, I feel like I'm completely out of control, or I'm running and I have no control. I think the worst thing is like when your feel and your controls are terrible, it's like that's usually a huge no-no. And there's been a few games in we've played on stream that had less than ideal control Zeno gear. Anyway, sorry, I'm just just um think remembering another game. But yeah, the game it feels tight. I feel like the mechanics of the combat are fair are fairly straightforward. I didn't use magic all that much, but it cause like you're kind of not really encouraged to, but there's one or two bosses that it did help, but... And probably I just wasn't using the optimal strategy or the optimal spell, so... The only thing is that you don't really know the weaknesses of bosses when you first face them, so you're like, hmm. And that brings me to, like, just a general gameplay. I... I generally like the loop of the game where you're like, how, like, okay, there's quite a bit of, there's dungeons, they're not too ridiculously long, and stuff like that, but this game kind of went a bit overboard on puzzles and finding things, like, I can, there were not a short, small number of times where I couldn't progress in the game because I didn't know where something was and I had missed it on the way to somewhere. And it's just frustrating to deal with that 
over and over again, you're just like, there's one time in like Stockholm, I couldn't get to the village because I couldn't, I hadn't picked up the whistle. I couldn't find the stupid like gotcha. I couldn't find like the, an item to progress. And it was like, there were many times when the game doesn't make it clear that how to progress. And I feel like that's kind of at its detriment. That's probably like the things I didn't like about the game as much because like essentially it is, it, it forced you to like play like you're gonna be you're just searching every area for everything and then sometimes it's frustrating because you don't see it and sometimes you were like I don't know where I should be searching and you kind of like I don't know what I'm doing and so a lot of it is I feel like that's one of the game's biggest weaknesses is that it's just really easy to get stuck. Nowadays you have the internet, so it's not a big, it's not a big deal if you don't want to pull. If you just like, oh, I'm just gonna look up the guide and like, okay, you can get through it. But it really, a game really shouldn't be forcing you to do that. I don't think it's a good thing. I feel like in this that aspect, Illusion of Gaia was a bit better, where you didn't i didn't get i don't remember getting stuck nearly as much i feel like the things were about it was a lot more straightforward i appreciate puzzles but i don't like it when it's just like oh you needed to find this thing and you didn't have to get it here and it's just like it's so frustrating and like i'm not a big fan <laughs> i think that's the game's biggest weakness and like if they had like they were trying too hard to make it so that to be clever and it's just like ah oh, goodness gracious it was such a pain to go through, and I am. Um, and also, I will say that this final boss is completely like what the crap. I mean, I I get that we want a good challenge and it's a lot of fun, but but goodness gracious, like why would you make the boss so difficult? Or like. It should have been tuned so that maybe they had, if he had lowered the HP, then like I would have been okay with it. Cause then like, otherwise to really do this boss comfortably, you probably needed at least one or two more levels and then maybe it'd be okay. Like otherwise you have to go through like what I just did, jump through the, jump through a million hoops just to get through, get to beat this boss and be really, really on point. And oh gosh. Yeah, some of the bosses are really unfair, and the only, the really annoying, I, I will give the game credit though. You are allowed to save mostly in front of like big bosses, and that's pretty cool. Or it's fairly easy, to, like in a dun most dungeons, like it was fairly easy to reach a boss, it's not that bad. But the bosses were just like, some of them were pretty tough, and it's, they're, they're really mean. And I'm actually. I'm surprised I didn't die that much, but like there was, I was just like decently like, I probably, I try to keep decently leveled, so I was probably okay for most of the game except for the final boss. So yeah, the game, maybe it's a little tuned to be a bit hard. I know it's from the Super Nintendo era, then I, but like, I'm still gonna ding it anyway. Cause like there's some, um, I don't think game bosses should be this hard and like, I definitely had struggled with this a lot more than with Illusion of Gaia, that's for sure. Also, one other thing I didn't like is that uh, the game makes it difficult to identify what items do. So the problem with this game is, unlike... Nah, just grind until you handle it, right? I know. You could, like, most people do that. Like, well, but... There are games that were on the easier... Like, I feel like Chrono Trigger is actually a pretty decent tuned and Final Fantasy 6 like people say it's easy but like I actually think like that's it's a good leveling curve and, and that's not including side content of course that doesn't that doesn't count like side content can be as hard as you want that's a whole different thing right so let me think I was gonna say something yes um one thing I don't that also is this game one of the weaknesses is that in the menu, you can't identify what an object does. So you're just guessing what something does. And like, that's really, it got annoying because you didn't know if you got an item that could cure something until you're like, oh, you have to try it out. And and it, it's just really annoying. <clears throat> there isn't that many item types, but it's like armors. You didn't know what they've defended against or... I feel like it's equipment that was the suffers the most because you don't know what the sword's strong against or weak against. 
or you don't know what the armor is weak against or strong against, so you basically had to pick a guess. You didn't know, and it's it's annoying. Cause then, the other thing that this game does is that it ha limits your inventory of item of armor and weapons. So you're just like, I want to, I want to throw out one of these armors, but I don't know which one is good. So you're just like taking a wild guess and like hoping. And I'm like, well, this one has really really low defense, so I should probably get rid of it. And it's. Like, it's just like, it's just not good for planning. And there are other games where, like, at this time, like, FF6 had already been out. Like, I was just like, could you have at least, like, put in a, a way of the menu to, like, or increase the size of the windows so you could display what the thing does? That would just be so much better. And, like, it, it's just a personal, like, thing that like bothers me a lot in RPGs when they don't tell you what something does and you have to shop and you you have to shop and you have no idea what it does you buy it and you don't still have no idea what it does you have to try it so it, it, it's just annoying and like even the menu system they've trying to make it really fancy it looks really neat at first but then like in terms of usability like Throwing out an item is like, oh, you have to go over here. It's it's really, this is really minor, by the way. This UI stuff I'm talking, like, not the item. That's really annoying. And it's a, and it basically forces you to memorize. The other thing is, like, navigating the menus is not the smoothest. It, I would just rather have been made it easier to switch between item armor and center room. Because, like, go, scrolling through the rooms is kind of weird. It's just slightly annoying, and when you could just have a simple menu and it'd be nice. It, even it wouldn't have looked as nice, but it would be a, a lot more functional. But that's just me personally. Just keep it cleaner. Keep it simple. But yeah, I think... I think I covered everything for... Gameplay and controls, because I... Oh, in terms of dungeons, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I did cover, like, I kind of touched upon this, where, like, I was saying, like, you have to find something obtuse to get through the dungeon. So, some things are really, like, annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying when you can't get through a dungeon because you don't know what to do. And, like, and the, the other thing is there's no mini-map. I mean, it's, it's the Super Nintendo era, so... For RPGs, having a mini-map wasn't a common thing, so I'm a little more forgiving in the sense that most... RPGs at that time, Super Nintendo RPGs at the time didn't have a minimap. I can't think of one right now, of the ones I played. I think only like the la the only game I can think of that had a minimap was Super Metroid, and that's not an RPG. Uh, let's see. And I guess that's. Oh yeah, and I'm also going to make make a special like call out for that stupid sneaking dungeon that was really annoying because the guards are very like the guards are very fickle and you don't know when they're just gonna turn and you're just hoping that was just frustrating it's not although it's nice that they added some i like the fact that they tried to switch up the game a bit by let, making a sneaking mission but those guards were just like i'm gonna turn and face you really fast and you're caught and you have to go all the way to the beginning instead of like just the beginning of the room which would have been better that would have been a lot easier but then you have to just do it Ew, that dungeon was just a chore to do and ah jeez the steel the dragon cast the dragon castle okay so now that i've covered the four areas i guess this means i usually just summarize and say what i like whether or not i recommend it because that's all you guys really care kind of care about too so after thinking like based on like just the length of the game and like generally how the game plays so there isn't i think that even in spite of its its flaws this game is certainly still i think it's still worth playing i think one nice thing about this is that because it's not so heavy on systems on like over complicated battle systems and you don't have to play this for like 80 hours to get through the game i think it's a good length it's it's an action RPG, so you need your reflexes. So it, it, you're not, you're never going to be b battling bored, and um, and in and the story isn't so long that and so difficult to understand. It's there's some confusing parts, but like there's a lot to enjoy about the game. It's not, it's a nice length, and I really do recommend it. Like even for non RPG, like people who are are not familiar with RPGs, it's certainly worth playing. 
you may be put off if you don't have a guide. So I do recommend, like, if you want, to, maybe if you want to save yourself the trouble, you can always have a guide ready. And especially the side quests, you're not gonna, you're most likely not going to be able to do side quests on your own without some like guiding, which I did. But yeah, so. I, for me, I usually say, like, I go between, like, a thumbs up buy, thumbs up rent, thumbs up, thumbs down rent, and thumbs down buy. Usually with some stream games, I don't. So, I feel this is a, excuse me, uh, thumbs up buy or rent. I mean, I who rents games these days, but, like, it's usually a good way of saying, like, I think it's, Maybe a thumbs up rent, honestly. For maybe RPG players, it might be a thumbs up buy, as in like, oh, you should definitely have this in your collection and play it sometime. For other people, maybe a thumbs up rent, just see how you feel like it. I, it's 2D, so it's so maybe you're not uh, not as familiar with it these days because of modern games, but yeah, definitely like it's definitely worth playing for sure. And I for I can more heartily recommend it for non RPG fans as well because it's just not too long. And the systems are not too complicated. And the story is like light enough and heavy enough at the same time. So yeah, definitely worth playing. I kinda think that Soul Blazer Illusion Guy and this game are totally worth it. And they are totally worth your while. And they're pretty they're awesome to play and a lot of fun. And almost but yet not devoid of like death. It's not a simple the stories are never quite as simple as you made. Well, Soul Blazer was a lot simpler, but Illusion of Gaia and this game are certainly like not as simple as you would think, just from the surface. And like I, th I think they're definitely worth playing. So I hope I definitely recommend to my friend uh, to recommend it to people. And yeah, it was worth playing. I mean, I enjoyed this playthrough a lot, in spite of all, in by the faults, in spite of like some of the flaws in the game. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of the review. I think with that we can uh, move on. All right. So now 